Hi, welcome to One Eye on the Page. I am Scott. This is Five Year Battle Agatha Christie, quarterfinals, week three. Let's go. Uh, two weeks ago, we selected, we watched this over there. Wash and I selected, and then there were none as the week one winner over the man in the brown suit. Last week, I selected the mysterious Mr. Quinn over Death Comes as the End. This week, we have Murder on the Orient Express versus the Mirror Crack from Side to Side. We have Hercule Perot versus Miss Marple. As it should be, I guess, since those are her two most famous detectives, the ones that she has written the most books of, although Pro is the one she has definitely written the most books of. I believe he's basically a third of her published books is Pro books. But we're going to go ahead and start with Murder on the Orient Express and Cat Fur. A very well-known book, obviously. Uh, I don't know how many books it has sold. Obviously, it hasn't sold as much as, and then there were none. But I have to assume, and this is just guesswork, that's probably her second highest bestseller. Uh, it is pro at his finest, I think. I don't think the character pro is better in any other novel. He he probably gets close in a few novels, but this is the pro that I like the best. Uh, also, no Hastings. I don't like Hastings, so, but that that's good. No Hastings. Uh, pro gets on the Orient Express. There are 13 other passengers. One of them, Mr. Ratchet, tries to hire him basically as a bodyguard because he says he has received death threats. Uh, Mr. Ratchet is later found stabbed to death, multiple stab wounds. Uh, the, the train stops, and Perot basically has to solve the crime uh, before they take off again. And Perot realizes that because of the situation that they have, nobody else could have murdered ratchet except somebody who was on that train on that car so he has multiple people he has to interview probably the book in which pro interviews is just the best a uh, lot of cat and mouse a lot of pro doing his 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 pro shtick, but it's not annoying like it gets in other pro books. It, it's just so well done. And each time pro finds out a little more and a little more. And hmm, chances are, if you're watching this, you have read the book, but I'm not going to reveal what happened. So I won't talk too much more about the book except to say that. It's one of the more unique Christie solutions. And it's also one of the more evident Christie solutions. It, I think that you see it coming at a certain point, but it becomes less about what the solution is and what is Pro going to do about it. And, and it, it's like, oh, I, I know what the trick is. I just want to see how Pro does it now. And that has to be a difficult thing to do in writing. And I think in this book, Christy just pulls it off amazingly well. Have, she has many characters to juggle, does them all well. A lot of these characters are stereotypes or maybe not multidimensional, but she still uses them well, which she sometimes doesn't. I'm forming a globe in my hand. I don't know why. 
Yeah, and I also there's also a something about one character. There's something about many characters, but there's one character reveal that I just really love, and, and I, I will say it's done very well in the first movie. I believe it was 1976. It was uh, Peter Ustinov was in it, I believe, or was it Albert Finney? It was it was the Murder on the Orient Express in the 70s, and the character reveal was done well in there. I watched the more recent movie, but I can't actually remember much about it. I didn't like this movie as well. But perfect reveal, perfect ending. I love the ending. I just... I love the mechanics of it. You know, that's what I go back to this book for now is just to watch how Christy like just designs everything. It's just an excellent, excellent book. If you haven't read it, read it. It's not always near the top for everybody, but I still think overall this is a very top book for a lot of people it, i'd be surprised if it's not like in the top five of almost every ranking of christie books now a book that i don't necessarily believe is in the top five is the mirror crack from side to side which is a miss marple book i uh, i will say i will admit right now not my favorite Miss Marple. My favorite Miss Marple is The Murder at the Vicarage, which was her first Miss Marple. And this book, The Mirror Crack from Side to Side, is a better written book overall. But I love the narrator in The Murder at the Vicarage so much that I was able to forgive a lot of flaws and a lot of kind of muddled characters or stereotypical characters, characters that were, I would say, half formed. But again, it, it was the hi buddy, the uh, the narrator, uh, the reverend, the vicar, for me in there. But this one is a better written story, I believe. I read this last year, and I read it before I saw the Glass Onion. I I wonder after having seen the Glass Onion, I wonder if Ryan Johnson. Uh, use this book as uh, inspiration for the movie. It's quite possible. I know that he he uh, is a fan of Agatha Christie, and it, it would make sense. You can see a lot of similarities there. Uh, but, yeah, Miss Marple, uh, there's a, a famous actress. She's having a party. A woman, uh, Heather, dies at that party. She spilled her drink, and uh, the Oh, the actress Marina uh, gives her a drink and the, the woman dies. And Marina believes that somebody was trying to kill her. And uh, it looks like she may be right because she starts receiving death threats. Her coffee is poisoned. Uh, other people start dying and then Miss Marple has to try to solve it. This, <laughs> this one is just... It's fun. It's got some little bit of over the top characters. It's probably one of the ones where I I think I like Miss Marple the best. Generally, I'm I'm not a huge fan of Miss Marple the character. She just doesn't really do it for me and like in a lot of her novels she's almost secondary. It's kind of like she almost just comes in, solves the crime. And, and that's it. But I, I think she does pretty well. She's fairly interesting in here. I I like the uh, reveal. It's not a surprise. But again, this is a much older book. Uh, it's not a surprise now after we have seen a lot of mysteries end this way. Um. I, I got to be honest, there's not really much to say about this. This one, like, and then there were none in The Man in the Brown Suit. There there wasn't much of a battle. The murder on the Orient Express was always going to win. Um, I don't think, there, there was no book in those six that I had to have 
face each other to get into the the three to make up the final eight, none of them were going to be, and then there were none in Murder on the Orient Express. Um, so, yeah, this one's a really short one, but it, it's it's the Murder on the Orient Express. That is it for this week. Next week, we finish off the quarterfinals. Next week, I don't know. These last three weeks, I pretty much knew going into the video which one was going to be the winner. I try not to select which one I'm going to rank until I'm in the video, which is why you often get me going with the pauses because I'm thinking. I don't know. But th no, these last three weeks, I knew what of the books I was going to choose each time. Next week, I really, I don't know. I don't know because these two are uh, much closer than these other ones. It is Endless Night in Crooked House. Two very good novels, but right now, thinking about it, and I'm not going to think too hard because I don't want to get the answer right now. I don't know which one I would pick. I'm going to talk it out next week. So please like and comment. Subscribe. I will talk to you next time. Wash says hi. Say hi. Nope, not going to say hi. All right, I'll talk to you then. Mm -hmm.